Welcome to Sword and Shield, the official podcast of the 960th Cyberspace Wing. Join us for insight, knowledge, mentorship, and some fun as we discuss relevant topics in and around our wing. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any particular person or business is ever intended. Welcome to the Sword and Shield Podcast. I'm Colonel Rick Erridge, and today I'm joined by... Uh, Command Chief Master Sergeant Brian Bischoff. Welcome. Welcome, Chief. It's great to, you know, we don't get a chance to do this a whole lot being UTA, but it's great to see you and let's uh, have a good discussion today. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we'll, uh, I've been doing some thought about the past year as I, as I often reflect and I thought about maybe we should talk about this year. It's been a little bit of a crazy year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few, few challenges, few ups and downs and twists and turns and stuff. So, uh, but that builds resiliency. So. Yeah, absolutely. And if you uh, if you think about where you were a year ago right now, would you have projected and thought about where would be this year and what we went through? No, but uh, if I were able to do that, I would have purchased a lot of masks and made a lot of money. So, uh, but no, did did not see that one coming. Yeah, yeah. if we'd have known, there's a lot of opportunity to uh, you know, yeah. be entrepreneurial nature and hand sanitizer for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, and then obviously we don't know what the next year is going to be, but yeah. we just want to talk a little bit about this year. And um, I think, you know, some words that come to mind are tough, wacky, weird, stressful, sad, um, optimistic, and not not only just because of COVID, but all the other things going on in, in the world right now, too, has kind of turned us upside down. Yeah, it, it, it does. And, and you know, for a lot of people that are used to having have a lot of stability and, and don't like change. Uh, it, it, it can be pretty tough. Um, I, I always, you know, try and put stuff in perspective to, to those around me. I'm like, look, any day you don't find yourself being shot at or blown up in a chow hall, it's a good day. Right. And, and having had both those happen, I'm like, Hey, anything short of that, it's all good. You know, I'll we'll work the problem. We'll figure it out. It's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I agree as well. And, um, 2020 started off, uh, I thought, really well at least for the wing yeah and uh we had a lot of good uh thoughts coming off and things we were planning we're coming off our one year anniversary as a wing mm -hmm. we had a bunch of things we wanted to do with the mission partners we wanted to grow and we were slowed down somewhat as uh covid kind of emerged mm -hmm. um and and i think where we are now compared to where we started i felt like the wing responded really well and people adapted quickly to that point that you had about change yeah yeah absolutely and and you know, not all the change has, has obviously been bad or, or a challenge. We've had a lot of good change. We, we now have uh, Sam in public affairs, which has been great. Thus, we're able to start doing these kinds of things. Um, you know, cyber blocks up and running. We've had Sergeant Veelman helping out with travel vouchers and getting a lot of those fixed. So I think, um, you know, not all the change has been a challenge. Some of the change has been really good. Um, and it's it's been good things for the for the unit as a whole. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes an, an exterior st stimulus to generate some of these change. And on this case, change was worldwide right. the pandemic. And um, I found it interesting too, that when this happened, my son came to me with a book he'd read called the 12 plagues and he'd read it for school in sixth grade. And he's an eighth grader now. So two years ago, and he still had the book and he started flipping through and he read me a section from this book that talked about all the 11 plagues throughout history. And the mm -hmm. 12th plague was um, ironically, very similar to what had happened. It talked about, Something started in China and it started and moved through the world very quickly and yeah. it had a lot of parallels to um, what he had. So I told him that he should write the 13th chapter yeah. to the book to find out what's next. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Well, you know, and um, so uh, another great thing that came out of it is everybody kind of became a reservist. Right. And and the reason I say that is so they started feeling our challenge of, hey, I can't VPN in. I can't, you know, I can't tell, you know, telework. And and that was a big challenge. And suddenly they were living in our world. So now, obviously, a lot has been invested in the infrastructure. So it worked out great for for, you know, those of us in the reserve where we can we now have very robust communication uh, systems out there to be able to do our work a little bit more efficiently. Whereas before, you know, I, I think active duty was kind of like, yeah, yeah, you guys are just whining and crying about it. And then when they had to walk a little in our shoes, they're like, whoa, wait a minute, this sucks. We need to get it fixed. Yeah, that's a great point, um, mm -hmm. you know, because we've been kind of fighting some of those challenges for a long time. I've been a reservist 
um, for about 14 years. And so mm -hmm. that's really been a challenge over time. We've tried to solve it within Reserve Command. We started Desktop Anywhere several years ago, yeah. um, which fell in place and blossomed uh, appropriately. But um, with our mission partners here at 688th, they're really interested now in maintaining this level of VPN for their to continue their ops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I think that's the other good thing that came out of this COVID situation is is being able to to telework and and work remotely. Um, and the additional funding that's been put for you know some of those those tools and techniques, and then others seeing that yes, you you can do some of that, and it, it increases your capacity and your capability. Everybody doesn't physically have to be sitting in the same room in order to do the job. Um, you know, you can. You can telework and still be very engaged and very effective. Yeah, that's that's been a great side effect, I think, too. Um, it's had some downfalls. So we talk a lot about people maintaining boundaries and mm -hmm. being able to um, communicate effectively about your availability. And I found myself, too, at times uh, being on all the time and mm -hmm. having a hard time of shutting off. So I think, you know, we're going to keep talking our airmen about, hey, you got to establish those boundaries with your supervisor, especially if you're traditional. So you can balance your, you know, your family life with your civilian job and then with your reserve life. And we don't expect you to do them all at the same time. And you need to set those boundaries to, to make sure you're healthy and can continue at the pace that we need you to participate with us. Yeah. And I think it's also very important, you know, kind of like we had talked with with Colonel Linian and, and a lot of the research he had done with the University of Michigan is is just setting expectations and having good communication, you know, both up and down, you know, the, the members setting good expectations with with their supervisors and, and vice versa. So that way everybody's on the same page. And, and um, you know, obviously when you're not face to face with people, it's very easy for communication to be misconstrued. So setting those expectations and, and staying in constant communication, I think is incredibly important, especially if you can do it visually, you know, doing, doing VTC stuff, since that's where most of, of all your nonverbals are coming through you, that doesn't really come across in a, in an email or a text. So I, I think the more, um, you know, uh, eyeball to eyeball communication you can get, even if it's over a computer, helps uh, get rid of any of those those misconceptions or misunderstandings. Yeah, and, and I know it helped me and it forced me to learn more about people and the people I work with in general to understand kind of what their challenges are personally, what's going on in their life. So I think that's a positive as well. Um, and, and, you know, I've seen some people reach out for help, like, hey, I'm struggling at this point. Uh, what resources is there? Can you help me here? I got these challenges. I need to to shape my life a little differently. And I think those are all good things because um, it'll help us retain that person understanding mm -hmm. what, you know, what they're going through at that time and what they need for support. Absolutely. And, and um, you know, now that we have a counselor on board, that's another great addition we've had to the, to the team and to the family here um, has been great. And, and I understand she's been, you know, um, very engaged and, and very busy with, with uh, a lot of folks reaching out to her, which is, which is great. You know, we've been trying to get, that position filled for quite some time. And and now we got a, you know, first, first round draft pick we got in there and, and she's just crushing it and, and able to really help all of our folks out, which is, which is what's critically important. Yeah, that's great. You know, you mentioned a couple of those key positions that we've, we've been able to fill and we're going to continue to do that. And we're almost, we're almost full up. Now the, the fight will be to increase what our capacity is and, and, and be able to tell our story about how we need some more authorizations for these functions to really function as, as a true wing. So we got some FM folks on board. We doubled the size of our FM shop as well. Um, of course, we have Sam on board helping us. And then you mentioned Francis and uh, the front office is full. And so lots of good things have happened throughout the year here, um, staffing up. And, and we've used a lot of RPA wisely, I think, with the Cyberblock. Mm -hmm. And that's been you know a real big focus of yours that I jumped on board and we've really pushed that hard. So. We, we've seen a dramatic decrease in their overdue um, travel vouchers mm -hmm. went from like 1.4 million down to about 400,000 right now. So I think that's a huge success that we should celebrate as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know when I got here um, a year and a half ago, that that was Colonel Jones first. First thing she brought up to me, she said, Chief, if you can fix the, the voucher issues that we're having, she said, that's a win. I don't care if you don't get anything else done. If we get we get that good, we get that greened up, then then that's a win. And um and that was a big concern of of everybody that I talked to when I first got here. So it's it's been it's been great to, you know, be able to have the resources that we can start implementing some of those things and getting a lot of that stuff greened up and and have not only our finance folks, but but Sergeant Beelman very engaged on that and being able to 
to help folks and, and get things done uh, in a uh, uh, quick and efficient manner and, and, you know, getting people paid. So that's, that's the other, uh, the other good part out of that. I don't know anybody that's allergic to cash. So, um, so it's always good getting, uh, you know, some money in some folks' pockets. Yeah. You know, uh, I, again, more side effects of that is that we learned a lot about the process and where the, the specific challenges are and the roadblocks within the, the process of getting these vouchers allowed us to apply some pressure to it mm-hmm. and then find out where we can exert influence to change that. And so not only are we getting people paid, but I think overall it's going to be better in the long run for all mm-hmm. the reservists because we understand how to navigate the system better. Well, I think one of the other big wins that, that we haven't talked about a lot and, and probably not a lot of people are aware of is um, – when you were able to engage with the 502nd to handle the whole GPC card issue, right? That's something that that we'd been fighting forever and a day, trying to get GPC cards down to the squadron level. And, and you know, you were able to dig in there and, and find the proper verbiage where we could kind of force our hand and say, yeah, you, you do have to provide them down to the squadron. So I know in the squadron superintendents I've talked to are very excited about finally getting a, a GPC and able to, to start doing purchases for their for their folks there, especially the combat com guys. Yeah, so it blew my mind that some some things that are seem so um, institutional and and process wise should be fixed became so hard. So, you know, I really didn't do much other than encourage the team to go find solutions. Uh, they brought back the solution and and we just applied it. We've got some training done, and again, something as small as getting people a GPC card to take care of our airmen can have a huge effect on the retention and the mission. And um, just their happiness and health overall as a you know as American citizen. Absolutely, and and then you know CG working on on all of the um, the um, MOAs and MOUs and everything, and and a lot of those getting signed will help out tremendously. Not only in our interaction with the four thirty third for defining roles of who's responsible for what, um, but also um, you know all those that we had to get set up there at the different bases, so that way we've got folks that can can get lodging and access the the different facilities from the host. Post wings that are there. So uh, again, more more good forward progress, I think, all in all, and, and things um, progressing as, as we get more and more mature as an organization. Yeah. So I've seen some um, a kind of a snowball effect kind of continue here. We've got a couple of A plans signed. You mentioned MOUs. We're really close to getting that 433rd MOU done. They're meeting this week. Goals to get that done before the January UTAs. And we'll share that with everybody so you can understand exactly what the expectations are for us. And for our mission partners, specifically 433rd. And so we're getting these things in place and then we'll be able to kind of accelerate further change we need to do. And as a launching point for, okay, you know, kind of what's next. And and so what kind of things do you think about for next year um, that we need to focus on? Yeah. So um, I would uh, personally, I think we need to continue um, getting more of our structure put in place. I think we're doing a good job at, at getting kind of the framework put in place, but we're not we're not quite ready to hang drywall just yet. So I think getting more of our processes squared away so we integrate well uh, with the 433rd, and then we also integrate well with, with 10th Air Force and then up to AFREC, making sure that we're um, producing good, solid products so that way we don't get things returned. That's that's what's been great about having Sergeant Beelman doing some cross-checking on, on vouchers before they go up. So you know, we want to make sure that that we're doing our, our due diligence. We're making sure that we're getting a couple sets of eyeballs on stuff before it, it you know, comes up to up to the wing or, or goes outside of the wing. So that way we're not having to do a lot of rework. Uh, and, and I think um, that will clear up a whole lot of frustration there. Uh, and then at the same time, we want to con- make sure we're continuing to develop uh, our, our future leaders. You know, as I was saying to some folks yesterday, you and I are going to be in the seat forever and, and we need to develop. The next folks that are going to be going to be coming on up. So um, I think continuing to make sure that we're we're developing our our big A airmen is is also incredibly important. Yeah, that's something that um, you know when when you're kind of building a wing and doing all these little business process institutional things that wings have been around forever have already got in place. Sometimes you kind of you know you got to you got to divide your time and it doesn't always give the time you need to the professional development. And so I think that's a really important piece here as we grow. Um, as we grow as a wing, we want to grow our leaders and we want them to, f- you know, fly the nest, get out of the coop, mm-hmm. get out there to other parts of the cyber community, get some more development, some experience, broaden, broadening, and then come back to the wing and bring that experience back to us and help us do better and continue to grow. Um, I, I think our mission partner relationships are really strong right now, probably stronger than they've ever been. We'll continue to focus on those, I think, as well. And that helps from 
um, all the things we talk about as far as business processes and the development piece as well. I think a highlight for me has been the professional development committee, how the two wings, our wing, the fourth or third, have worked really good together. And, and frankly, we've seen some people step up um, and, and tackle some things that maybe would not have had the opportunity if COVID never happened. Right. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, I, I got a lot of good feedback from Chief Cullen when I talked to her yesterday and, and she said, man, you guys are just crushing it with the with the professional development committee uh, and, and getting a lot of that, that information out there. So I think there's there's a lot of great resources that are available. Uh, and, and really, I just want to make sure that people are one, aware that the resources are out there. And number two, are taking advantage of those resources uh, and, and um, you know, because it's 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 free. It doesn't get any cheaper than free. Right. So whether you're working on your education or your professional development or whatever, you know, just take advantage of it now, because uh, when you're when you're no longer wearing its uniform, it's not free anymore. And uh, it gets real expensive real quick. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, what I think about is that it's not all rainbows, unicorns. And those are the things that you and I are trying to tackle along mm-hmm. with the with the bigger team. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do. But I think the path we're on, um, I feel good about where we've come in a short period of time and where we're headed. And I think the the longer this goes and the better we get, the clearer that path becomes of what we need to focus on and fix for people. And and I'm looking forward to the UEI uh, in June because I think I feel really good about where we are and I want them to come in and give us good luck. Mm -hmm. Um, It'll be the first one. Let's establish kind of where we are and they'll help us focus on those things maybe that need more attention from us as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and that's, you know, that's the other thing I want to make sure that that we're doing as a personal goal for me is to, um, you know, make sure that we're, we're getting rid of the the self-inflicted gunshot wounds, right? The, the, the low hanging small stuff that causes so much consternation and, and just is kind of a real pain in the butt that is completely preventable. So, you know, if I think if we get those things out of the way, kind of like the whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? If, if we get the baseline done and, and the small stuff is not biting you in the butt, um, then you can start focusing up on your your higher needs that you have out there and and more strategic things and and so forth. So I think we've made a lot of great progress in there, and I think we're going to make a lot of great progress in the next year. Uh, it's just a, a matter of finally getting the the pieces into place to be able to execute on some of those things. Yeah, we see some indications of um, of we're kind of stepping up on the stage and doing some things. So you know, some things I want to highlight is our retention is really really good. And when we look at it compared to the 433rd, then it compared to 10th Air Force, we're right like in the top five units. So people enjoy what they're doing in our business. I think they see the progress and there's hope that um, that that things are going to continue to get better and we continue to focus on them. And they feel like this business we're in cyber is so much opportunity and we're trying to figure out what's next for us. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll maybe get some clarification on some of those things in the next year as well. And and we met with General Scobie and did ha- did a presentation for him about election security, pre-election and post-election. And, you know, in that discussion, he continues to talk about space, cyber and ISR is where the future is. And, and there's there's a growth area there. And I think, you know, the, the sky's the limit for us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so anybody you talk to, cyber is a, is a growth business and it's going to continue to grow. Uh, and I see more and more investment being being made there in the people. Uh, in the training, in the schools, in the equipment, uh, because there that's something you have to go all in on. You can't you can't hold short on that and and hope that things go well because uh, we all know it's not going to. So um, you know, I, I think the great thing about that is that's going to give our people options and choices uh, and a lot of coolness factor of of the different things they're going to be able to do that directly impact uh, this country and its security. Yeah. So when it comes to change, right? We talk a lot about change. I don't think it's in the in our business. Change is constant. So I, I think the thing we can always rely on is change. <laughs> and who knows what the challenge is going to be next year? Well, right. And and that's one of the other things why I, I try and tell everybody, hey, you know, even when you're you're doing your CBTs, right? Do your CBTs and pay attention to all these things because you never know when you're going to have to use those kinds of skills or or start working a problem. You know, like you said before, nobody saw the whole COVID thing coming and wearing masks and and so on and so forth. So, you know, what's the next big thing coming around the corner and are you prepared, you know, for it? Did you pay attention to the training that that you've taken and and are you prepared to be able to handle whatever comes up with with little to no external guidance um beyond the training that you've received? So, it's it's to me that's important. That's something we do have control over is is we've got a lot of great training in a lot of different areas. 
that we can pay attention to, something as simple as your self-aid buddy care, right? You never know. You don't have to be downrange. You can be here locally, and you're the first one to roll up on an accident, whether you save somebody and and, uh, and the family that's potentially in the car could heavily depend on, did you pay attention to that CBT or were you just clicking through it? So, um, uh, you know, we don't know what's coming next, but I think being prepared and using the tools we have in our toolbox uh, will get us in a much better place for that and, and cut down our, our stress of the unknown. Yeah, that's a great point because you and I weren't trained to deal with a pandemic, Yeah, right? A hundred yeah. years, um, every hundred years is a pandemic roughly. We weren't trained for that, but all the other training and opportunities and experience we've had has has somewhat prepared us. And uh, at the end of January last year, or this year, January 2020, I was at the Wing Commander and Vice Commander course. And uh, stuff was starting, you started to bubble and hear about something going on in China, about a bug, and we didn't really pay attention. But the senior leader in, in the course said, you will have an opportunity to lead in a crisis. So every wing commander, every group commander, every squadron commander, every squadron superintendent, group soup, and wing command chief during their career will have a crisis that they need to lead through. Little did we know that it would be a pandemic. At that time in the class, the biggest struggle for the REGAF uh, wing commanders was base housing and the mold issue, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a significant issue. So now we're going to throw pandemic on top of it, social unrest on top of it. We got lots of opportunities to lead and we're going to need everybody in the wing to lead at their level and help us through this and share their experiences and training. Yeah. And, 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 and for me is the feedback loop um, mm -hmm. is really important. A absolutely. And, and, you know, capturing those lessons learned and, and the good ideas that we were able to implement is, is crucial. So as someone who lives in a panhandle of Florida, you know, when we get swacked by a hurricane, you know, first thing you do is, all right, hey, what, what are the lessons learned from previous hurricanes that we can implement now to to make sure that we're we're getting back to normal as fast as possible? So I think capturing those things um, and, and folks sending up, hey, here's how we're doing business. Here's how we're able to to attack that problem and uh, and be able to improvise, adapt and overcome is huge because, um, you know, everybody may not be thinking along the same line. So if you come up with a good solution, you know, share it with everybody so that way everybody can take advantage of it. Yeah, you never know when you're going to need to use it. Yeah. And we don't know what next year is going to look like. So there's a lot of optimism. I think the glasses have full. The future is bright for us going into next year. And we really look forward to tackling all your problems out there and developing leaders to help us solve these problems. Chief and I can't solve them all. We're here to um, break glass, um, break down roadblocks, but we need the whole team on board to help solve these. Yeah, absolutely. It's like one of my previous commanders said, we're, we're like offensive linemen. Our job is to open up holes in a line and, and you know, let let everybody else run with the ball through there. So, um, you know, open up holes of opportunity and, and letting folks run with the ball because that's, that's how they're going to learn. That's how they're going to grow. And, and that's how they're going to be ready to be the next, you know, wing commander or, or command chief. Um, and that's, that's what it's all about. Yep. So next year, we're going to continue to focus on our, our three priorities of empower our airmen and their families, optimize our readiness and continue to execute the mission. And, and we'll focus on initiatives to solve problems within those and make everybody's life a lot easier. So I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And I know it's going to be rough and different this year. Um, find the optimism in it and, and find, uh, find things to be grateful for. So um, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for Sam. I'm grateful for everybody in the wing. And uh, hope to continue to lead and get opportunities to make our airmen shine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I feel the same way. I'm, I'm thankful for everybody we have. Uh, within this wing and all the, the awesome work they're doing. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity to to continue to wear this uniform because there's a lot of people that don't have that opportunity. Uh, and I think it's important that we we kind of, you know, do a, an internal check of what we have to be thankful for and what things are going well and what things are going right in our lives and not not always focus on what's what's going sideways, you know, and, and sometimes you do have stuff going sideways, sideways but when you do um, realize that that you're part of a team. You know, and the team's there to support you, um, at, you know, whatever it is you're going through. So, you know, uh, if, if you're having some challenges, reach out, ask for some help, and, and we solve it as a team. Um, you know, sometimes it's tough when you're, you know, if you're isolated or alone. Me, it works great because now I don't have family coming over to uh, to my house for the holidays. So that's that's less work I've got to do. So I'm, that's my positive <laughs> spin on it. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, I wish everybody a, a happy holidays out there. Um, hopefully it's, it's great for you. And, um, and like I said, just, just take stock of what you got in your, uh, 
in your kit and be appreciative of it. Yep, Chief, I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And we will um, put 2020 behind us in the rearview mirror and take what we learned and implement it for next year. And we'll continue to get after those things we need to do next year too. So absolutely great seeing you. Sounds and good. Thanks everybody for joining us to the, for this podcast. And uh, we'll be back again next week.